Hey guys, I got a great drill for you today to help you make more putts. We're going to talk about the scoring zone here. And what I call the scoring zone is anything from 12 feet and in, specifically around this 8 to 10 foot range. This is the range where you're close enough to where if you're putting really well, you can make a lot of putts. If you're putting poorly, you're going to miss just about everything. So if you get to where you're putting well from this zone, you're going to be able to really capitalize. A lot of people like to practice from two and three foot putts. I'm not a big fan of that because even if you're putting terribly, you're going to make most of your three foot putts. But this is the range that we can really, really make a lot of birdies from. Tough to get inside eight foot consistently for birdie, you know, from the fairway and that kind of thing. Uh, especially when we're on par fives, we're going up on the green. This would be our, our, our birdie putt after we chip up pretty close on most of the par fives. So here what we're doing is we're using a training aid from Eyeline Golf. It's called the Sword. Very simple training aid. I like this because you can fit this in your bag. Usually the long pocket that's on the side of your bag can, can hold this. Or if you just want to put it down where your clubs are, you can take it out with you to practice. Very easy to use. Now what this does is I'm going to find a dead straight putt. I don't want to have the putt that breaks. I'm going to find one preferably that's straight uphill. And I'm going to get it about eight foot away. We can go 10 foot away as it has marked on the ear. And we're going to line it up, roll a few, and make sure that there's no break at all in this putt. Now, the cool thing about this is it's going to tell you right away specifically which way your face is lined up. So when we make putts, the direction the ball starts is going to be mostly toward wherever our face is pointing. So I could be swinging, let's imagine me swinging straight back and through, but if my face is closed, let's go ahead and try one out with my face closed, that ball is going to go to the left. And that's extreme, I'm exaggerating there a little bit. Uh, but my putt, my, the direction my putter was swinging is pretty straight, but you'll see that there my face was open, the one before the face was closed, and it's falling off of this sword. So that seems like it would be pretty easy to put down this sword, but where it's a hard plastic, it is extremely difficult to get it to putt on this. We have to be very, very precise. So I'm going to set up this eight footer here, and I'm really going to concentrate. There's a line that's on the back of this device that shows you if your putter face is dead square. As I set up to the ball, I'm going to go ahead and get my feet, my hips, my shoulders, everything lined up square. And then I'm going to set up the face to make sure it's square. And then I'm going to set it right up with the, the putter head. And I'm going to try to make a few of these. I'm not even going to pretend like I'm going to make every single one of them because it's very difficult to keep it on this, this plastic sword. So that's a great drill to, to work on. And again, here, I'm looking at my alignment of my face, marking it with the line that's on the sword. I'm getting my stance, my hips, my shoulders, everything in, in good alignment with that. And then I'm making sure that my face, I'm looking at the feedback. If I start to miss a few where the ball falls off to the left, then I know my face is too closed. I'm going to feel like it's a little bit more open. If I hit a few where my ball falls off to the right, I'm going to have the face close a little bit more. So I may have this lined up just slightly too far to the right. You can see it went down the sword that time and, and barely missed. Uh, but let's try one more here and we'll see if I can... I can get it to stay on the sword. There we go. So close the face down a little bit. Always tough to do. This is a great training aid uh, because it really is a lot tougher than it first appears. Now on the back side, another cool thing I like about this is it gives us a reality of what we should be shooting for. So if we flip this over, you can see from three feet that uh, PJ Tour players are going to make most of their putts from six feet where it has here. PJ Tour player makes or, uh, five feet, excuse me, PJ Tour player only makes 75%. So if we can flip this over and we can get this about five feet away, a little bit closer, and we can make about 75% of these, we're gonna know we're right on par with what the tour guys are making. If you go out from eight feet where we were before, just like it has it marked on the back of this, only 50% from PJ Tour. So if you can make more than 50% of your eight footers, you can get them to roll down this sword, you're gonna be doing better than your average PGA Tour player. So work on this anywhere from 12 feet all the way up to five feet is kind of the range that I like to, to go from. Not a big fan of the three footers because you're gonna make those even if your technique isn't quite right. So try out the sword, I really like it. I keep it in my bag now and, and practice with it on a pretty regular basis. And I think you guys will enjoy it too. All right, so I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. Now, one of the most important things we can do in golf, and let's face it, we all wanna crank the ball. We wanna hit it hard with a lot of power. That's probably the number one thing to improving your golf game that I found. And the best thing to do to improve your speed, your power, is to get a lot more lag in the downswing. So I got a great bonus for you. One of the number one mistakes that I see people make that is really killing their lag. I'm gonna play a preview of that video if you want to watch the full thing, all you have to do, if you're on a desktop device, you're on a, on a computer, go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. 
That'll get you instant, instant access to that full video, plus five videos, five bonus videos from our Top Speed Golf system. It's gonna walk you through the entire system. And then if you're on a mobile device, a tablet, you're gonna go ahead and click on the iCard that's somewhere on the screen right now. Go ahead and click that iCard, click that link. It's gonna get you instant access, and I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.